Good morning, everyone. Adele here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday. And this clip is about something that's been showing up in my office. Um, how to work with psychic information. I only have a few minutes before my next client shows up. And this is just going to be a quick blurb about, um, you know, a lot of my clients are working with professional psychics, intuitives, and they come on in. And in my work, this brings up an interesting array of questions, issues, and I'd love to hear from you if, if you've worked with psychics and you've got questions about the information you got, or um, I'd be interested in hearing the result of how it was. Oh, okay, sorry, Facebook was sending me a note. Type away, um, because in my work, I would say about half of my clients are psychics, either professionally or they have psychic abilities because frankly, everyone has some. Yes, everyone has some, even you. Um, and sometimes it's very confusing um, what this all means. So if this clip sounds interesting to you, share it with all your friends. I'm gonna give you a few observations and suggestions about how to work with psychic information. Uh, first, let me tell you what doesn't go so well. Um, and by the way, uh, I am an intuitive mentor myself. So the information is fluent, flowing through me into the client. Clients are getting information and clients are consulting other folks um, with this information. This is how not to do it, okay? Because I'm seeing this too often in my office is people are coming in and they're oftentimes upset about something and they went to see a psychic and the psychic told them, oh, yes, the person you're with is destined to be your soulmate. Um, you know, go that way. Or, you know, this job in this city would be better for you than this job in that city. Or um, one, of, one that's been showing up a lot is you are meant to be doing X for a profession. Okay, first of all, Understanding the psychic is like, um, for, it's, it's healthier if you look at it as it's just information. It's, it's like working with a consultant, an artistic consultant, uh, a business consultant. A psychic is not a bona fide guarantee. Now, just like consultants, there are good ones. There are ones that don't have much experience and are trying to be helpful. And there are some that are perhaps naturally grooving with you more than others. And there's some that just don't know what they're doing. So you as a consumer have to be able to discern. Um, I've had people in here saying, you know, I went to see a psychic and the psychic said, I've got a curse or a hex on me. And, and they said, Adele, if I were to pay them $5,000, this person would clear my hex for me. Don't do it that way. Stop. That is not anything you want to get involved with. Um, then I have to spend half of the, the work in explaining to them what's happening to them in what the psychic information is, what manipulation is. And by the way, this is not an exact science. There is value in working with psychics only if you know how. Okay, so let me say that again. There is value in psychic work only if you know how to use the information. And unfortunately, people typically find, look to psychics as the bona fide answer and guarantee. So how do you know? I mean, heck, half my clients are psychics. The other half are going to psychics and telling me what the psychics are saying. Some of them, some of them are going to psychics and asking the psychic about me, which I always think is delicious. And then they come back and tell me what the psychic said about me. And I'm, I mean, usually the information's, uh, the, the feedback's very good and I'm always flattered, but if it's not, it's, it's okay too. Um, everyone is psychic. Everyone. Um, the best psychic for you, guess what? is you, because there's never going to be anyone who knows your information more accurately than you do. How many of you can relate to this? Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute here. If you have questions on this, I've got like 10 minutes before the next client, so um, I hope I can see your comments. Why is this? In... Anyway, will someone do something out there, like hit a button or something? Yes. Okay, groovy. 
Um, what was I saying? Yes. This is really hard for a lot of people to hold that the best psychic for you is you. And you are just as intuitive as the next person. I have a lot of clients coming in that, um, they, they say they've been, to well, they, they say they're very intuitive and I'm like, yeah, everyone is groovy on you. And they say things like, well, I don't know what I should be doing in life, but I've been told, um, being told I was highly intuitive was, uh, that Dan brought, oh, good to see you. I've seen your post affirmation helping you tremendously. Yes. Okay. Groovy. You have intuition. Everyone does use it more because then yes, we wouldn't have to have a whole profession of people out there who don't know you as well, telling you what your own reading should be. Now there are times when working with a psychic can be useful, just like working with a consultant. Okay. So folks, if you treat a, a psychic like a consultant, you'd be much better off. What happens though, is that people hand over their power to the psychic and then it gets really weird. The psychic said X, therefore I'm going to, you know, change my stock holdings or I'm going to break up with my boyfriend because the psychic said to do so, or, you know, pay this lady $5,000 to remove a hex. And now I'm going to have another clip just on that. That's a little bit different. Oh yes. I love your turn. Your handle that damn rod. Every time I see it, it makes me smile. Um, yes. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So one thing that will help you a lot in working with your own, I want you all to become your own psychic before you, you know, if you want to do a profession like I do in helping other people and, and getting divine guidance and helping other people with your psychic gifts, first get more clear on yourself. In order to do that, some of you know about the chakra system and I'll just say one quick technical blurb. You'll be much better at your craft for yourself and running your own life if you can tune in more to the lower energy systems of your body, the first, second, and third chakra, especially the first and second. And those are the ones that are usually the most difficult because they don't talk. They feel because my impression is that a lot of my clients, most of my clients uh, are struggling with, it's not that they're not intuitive. They're too intuitive. They're so intuitive. They're losing their minds because this download of information is so intense of what they know versus what they think. For example, divine guidance usually happens fairly quickly. Oh, okay. Sorry. I've got to notice that a client's coming. Um, it doesn't take 10 billion years for the intuition to hit the light body and your nervous system. Intuitive just means, you know, without knowing how, you know, right? It just bam. Split second, light speed information. Yeah. That's how we know. It's not through the analysis and thinking of the pros and cons and that light speed intuition needs to be accompanied with some feeling. Otherwise it's just a thought. So it, you're trying to discern. Yes, absolutely. Violet You've got to believe in yourself. Oh my God. Um, I'm training a lot of healers and intuitives and psychics. And this is the number one thing I start off with because the tendency is to float up. I'm going to, you know, get more information. I'm like, you already have too much. You don't know what to do with it. And that's why life isn't working on the ground. For example, classic example, lady coming in here a little bit later today. I've, I've already looked at her because I, I do a reading on every client before they show in, they show up. And this is a situation of infidelity and I know this woman is so intuitive. It's driving her crazy. She doesn't think she is. She's got to figure it out. But she knew 20 years ago that her husband was having an affair or several. That light speed information hit her energy body like that. And you know what? She couldn't. It's too much. I don't want my life to change at light speed. So I'm going to slow it down right? I'm going to block off my intuition. I don't want to know what I already know in my bones. How many of you can relate to this? It, that is the nature of, of intuition. It hits. 
And our problem is sometimes we don't want to listen. It's not about becoming more psychic. My goodness. If people are trying to become more psychic, it's, you, it's half the time. It's because they don't want to deal with what they already have. You, all, you are already more intuitive and psychic than you know what to do with. That's the problem. The guidance is coming in and now on the ground, what am I going to do with my relationships? I knew he was having an affair. I just didn't want to accept it. Didn't want to believe it. Didn't want to deal with it. The, the implication on the family, the kids. I mean, it's a big deal, right? So 20 years later, there's a lot of health issues. These, these conditions that, you know, no amount of medications and doctors can resolve because it's not really a medical problem. Yes. Thank you, people. Folks, I'm trying to create a tribe out there of intuitive psychic women. If this sounds like you, I don't know if you already like the channel or whatever, spread the word with all your friends because I don't want to be doing this work by myself anymore. Trying to create a community. Hey, Melissa of women that understand the psychic and intuitive is as natural as breathing. You don't have to go out to become more. And a lot of people are investing tremendous amounts of energy and money in sophisticated uh, spiritual development programs, energy healing programs, thinking that they're going to become more intuitive. Now I have a whole, I'm going to probably have a blog post on that, especially about the healing stuff. I have, an opinion, <laughs> which is all I've got, on what I'm seeing going out there with some of these training programs. That's beyond the scope of this live stream today because my new client's showing up in a few minutes. But, but the point is, you are already more intuitive and psychic. You don't need to become more. Usually when people want to become more, it's because they feel like, well, with more information, then I won't make a mistake, you know? But your intuition is already sending you information. So what do you do with that? Go lower in the body. Some of you guys have already heard me talk about the importance of the womb space. I'm a, art of license, I'm a licensed art of feminine presence instructor. It's a body of work. I'll be talking to you more about that, especially for women. I would rather you guys feel your way down in the body, not so much in the heart. Heart is more about the, the fourth chakra. is more about things like... Uh, Justice, love for humanity, um, you know, we love all mankind. And the womb down here, lower chakra, it's doggone it, Adele, it's people I can't stand. I love humanity, it's people I can't stand. It, I love that expression. Um, I think for some of us, we are raised to not believe. Yes, come join my tribe, come out of the closet, start to expand this ability you've always had. Start with yourself. Sometimes the tendency is to start reading other people, and that is uh, typical when people had to suppress their natural psychic intuitive gifts early. The environment. People were shouting and screaming, fighting, alcoholism, violence, whatever. So this ability, instead of going where it should have gone to help you... Uh, regulate your life and make decisions, it went out into the environment to ping for safety's sake. So it got a little bit miswired. And then other people beat you up for doing that. You know, so shoot, my client's going to be here in like two minutes. Um, is this making sense for you guys? Let's see. I think, yeah. Any comments? Post below on this post your questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at any uh, questions and comments about this topic because you all know who you are. Sensitive, I know you are. And I'm here to form a tribe, to start a conversation. Post your comments and questions below. And what I'm going to do is do a follow-up um, broadcast. It might be later today or I, I can't, I don't know. But I'm, I'm definitely going to look at them. But um, this is natural. This is normal. No one else is going to be more psychic than you are. If someone else, and, and let, let me tell you one more thing that I think explains the psychic phenomenon. When you go to a professional psychic, they tend to be more accurate in reading the past than the future. Okay, so I just want you guys to, to know that sometimes there's a sense of, oh my gosh, the psychic was so accurate in describing everything that happened to me. So then there's the tendency to project, well, then they must be just as accurate for the future. 
There's a reason for this. When you look at energy and timelines, it's true. If, if you're into some of this um, energetic stuff, all time is happening simultaneously. The past, present, and future are all happening at the same time, right? However, the past has already been written. You already made certain decisions. So that energetic stream, when I'm reading somebody or when a psychic is reading, is, it's, already been, it's already happened. It's clearer in the energetic system. The future, however, is fluid. Because at any given time, there are a hundred different decisions you could make. And a good mentor or a psychic's job is to look at, okay, which way is the energy flowing and, and perhaps, perhaps give a suggestion. You know, it feels like it might go easier if you do it this way or more, whatever. It's a consultation. It's not a guarantee. This is also what, because it hasn't been written yet. The past has already happened. Anyone can read the past. You can read your own past. So that's why people often get a little confused. Well, if they were so great at re reading what happened when I was five, maybe they can help me know, tell me who I'm supposed to marry. I'm telling you folks, the number of clients I'm getting that went and saw a psychic and the psychic told them something and it didn't work out that way. I can really empathize. I can see where people lost their power. And oh, shoot, my client's going to be here any second. I want to continue this conversation. Is this interesting you at all? More? Yes. Da, 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 da. Um, type any thoughts. I'm, I'm so sorry. I have to cut this broadcast short because the client I just mentioned will be here any second. And I want you all to join me in sending this person a lot of empathy. Help me in my work with this client, not from, it's, it's as simple as a kind thought and a prayer, because you know what? We've all been there. We're all so intuitive, we can't stand it. That's the problem. We don't know because the, the lower body is more on action on the ground. We can be up here with great insights all day long, but the lower body is where rubber meets the road in terms of actions in our relationships, our finances, our health. And that's where a lot of two people just get stuck. I just want to live up here. I don't want to access the lower chakra power centers. And then there's this split. Okay. I hope I'm making sense. You lose your power. Yeah, Violet. It's happened to me. It's happened to me. Everything of what I'm saying, folks, I have experienced it. I'm not this brilliant person. I've just lived some of this <laughs> more than once myself. And now I see it with my clients. So the next time someone tells you, you are meant to be doing X. I've had clients in here claiming that a whole bunch of psychic readers told them that they were supposed to be healers. I'm meant to be a healer. I'm like, lovely. Is that what you want? Is this something that you can't, they can't give me a straight answer because they can't, they haven't been able to feel for themselves. So they're going out. What do you think? What do you think? And if all of them say something, then maybe I won't make a mistake. That's great. What happens if they don't say the same thing? You know, I'll bet you on a given day, I did this once when I was in a really bad spot. It was after a breakup. How many of you can relate to this? People go to psychics after a breakup. And this was a while ago when I didn't, I was, I was a mess. And I think in the span of like a week, I, how many psychics did I see? Maybe five or six. And I was in my scientific little mind. All right, I want to see if there's any correlation here. Are these people going to tell me the same reading? Guess what? No. Now, you can spin that any other a number of ways. You can say that uh, differences of opinion, picking up different energy streams of possibility. So maybe some of them were just making stuff up. Oh, I've met some of those. Don't be fooled. There are a couple people in town. If you ask me about them, I'd say, run! And there are some people that are reputable. Okay. Okay. Love the comments. I'm trying to read while I'm right, um, broadcasting. I got to run because otherwise she's going to wonder what happened to me. Blessings to you all. Post your thoughts right below. This is kind of a funky topic. <laughs> um, and um, I want the next uh, broadcast to be more proactive so I can like either type a response or something while you guys are typing. Next one, um, 
I'm going to maybe have an assistant to help out in reading. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Share this with all your friends. Help me build a tribe here. Um, yeah. So I hope this has been useful. And until next time, rock it out, okay? Have a great day. Thanks.